and welcome back to the most amazing channel on the internet. I'm your host Rebecca Felgate, and today we're talking about the top 10 scary Massachusetts urban legends. Any of you from Massachusetts? Any of you New Englanders watching? Let me know where you're from in the comments section down below and if we've done an urban legend for your town, city, state. And if we haven't, let me know if you want one. Also, what's the weirdest thing to happen in your town? Let's get sharing some stories. While you're down there in the comments section, why don't you like this video and share it with a friend and subscribe to Most Amazing Top 10 if you haven't already. Stick around to the end of the video where I'm going to be reading out some answers to your previous comments. Coming in at number 10, we have the Dover Demon. In April 1977, 17 year old William Bartlett was driving down a dark road in Dover, Massachusetts when he saw a pale creature with large glowing green eyes and tendril fingers on top of a stone wall. That same night, another teenager in the area reported seeing a similar creature, as did another on the following evening. William Bartlett drew a sketch of the creature, saying this is what he saw. Aliens! I'm straight up saying aliens! Young Bill swore on the Bible that he was telling the truth, and the case gained a lot of national and international attention, likening the Dover Demon to the Sasquatch or the Loch Ness Monster. In the end, police decided that it was probably just kids scheming to cause some trouble. Although, a look back over the town's records tells me that actually, the teens may not have been the first to spot the creature. Since the 17th century, the stretch of road the creature was spotted on has been home to some weird occurrences. Coming into number 9, we have the Devil of Wizards Glen. Ah, the cursed Glen of Berkshire, Massachusetts. Back in the early days of the settlers, they fundamentally did not understand the natives of the land and sometimes misunderstood their practices as being satanic. The frady old Puritans decided that a certain area of the woods was home to the spirit of evil. They found a cave in the woods with a red rock and what looked like blood stains in it, which they decided must be where the tribes make their human sacrifices. One day, a settler by the name of John Chamberlain was out hunting in the woods when a storm came over and he had to take shelter. He went inside the supposedly satanic cave without knowing what it was. He couldn't leave the cave all night, and he claims that as the storm raged, Age, the devil came to him. He described him as having wings, horns, and hooves, aka the classic devil starter pack. He also said that he saw imps of hell, ghosts, and spirits. He said he saw a beautiful young naked native lady who he had to save by brandishing his Bible at the devil. Luckily, he had his Bible on him. He spoke the name of the Lord, and bang, the devil was gone. Finally, when the storm passed, Chamberlain went back to his town and told the people what he saw, and thus the legend of the devil in the cave was born. Of course, science endures, we now know that the blood stains in the cave were actually iron deposits. Coming into number 8, we have the Route 44 Hitcher. Route 44 is a massive stretch of road on the Massachusetts coast through Rhode Island. It also goes through the middle of Connecticut and into New York. This stretch between Rehoboth and Seekonk is famously haunted by a hitcher. Since the late 1960s, many drivers have seen a man wearing a dirty red flannel shirt, thumbing for a lift. On the few occasions that people have stopped to collect him, he disappears before getting in the car. The legend has it that in life, he was killed by a truck as he thumbed for a lift and is now doomed to haunt the road for eternity. Coming into number 7, we have the ghost of Harry Maine. The seaport town of Ipswich is a lovely place to visit. It's right on the coast and the land is rugged and beautiful. Ipswich was one of the first established settlements in New England, dating back to the mid 1600s. Now, this story comes from 1671 when a pair of men, Andrew Diamond and Harry Maine, moved to the town to better their futures. Diamond thrived as a successful fisherman, but Maine turned to a life of crime. Most often, Maine would steal items from shipwrecks, which were quite common on the Massachusetts shores in those days. Not satisfied with his loot, Maine started up as a moon cusser, which is a particularly nasty type of pirate who would set bonfires on the shoreline in order to purposefully confuse ships. Now, this would lead ships to wrong steering, and eventually they would become wrecked. He would then climb aboard these ships and kill the survivors and steal what was there. When his crimes were discovered, he was forced by the Ipswich community to shovel sand until he dropped dead. And dropped dead he did, but that wasn't the end of his story. His mean spirit is said to haunt his former home in the town, as well as the shoreline. It is also said that he left buried treasure from the ship somewhere in the town protected by magic. Coming into number 6, we have the ghosts of Boston Common. 
Boston Common was the site of numerous hangings back in the day, not just for witchcraft, but for a number of crimes in ye old Puritan and colonial eras. They loved their gallows. Hang them! Hang them all! Legend has it that Quakers, pirates, thieves, murderers, and witches alike have all died in America's first public park, and not only that, their souls still haunt looking for justice. Most often spotted are a pair of harmless seeming ladies who walk arm in arm or sit on benches in early 1800s attire. There is even a communal burial ground in the common where lowly members of society were tossed into mass graves. The area around the burial ground is said to be very eerie, with people reporting flashes of light and feelings of doom. Coming into number 5, we have the Pukwudgies. I absolutely had to mention the legend of the Pukwudgies and I'll tell you why, but first, the legend. Deep in the woods of Barnstable, legends of fairy tales are rife. All manner of creatures are said to roam the forest, but the most enduring legend is the legend of the Pukwudgies. These are said to be swamp dwellers and damp lovers and are creatures with smooth grey skin. The creatures are fiercely protective over their space and like to play tricks on passers by who encroach on their territory. A bit of trickery never hurt anyone, but it also sounds like the Pukwudgies have the ability to lure people to their death as well as launch poison arrows at them. Basically, you don't want to fall foul of one of these little cretins. Now, the reason I wanted to tell you about them is twofold. One, they're native to Massachusetts, and two, they are in Harry Potter folklore too. We all know that I'm a dastardly Slytherin, but I could have been a Pukwudgie had I ever gone to Ilvermorny. Except I'm a horned serpent. Meh. Coming in at number four, we have the abandoned dog town. Dogtown is a literal ghost town in the former parish of Gloucester, Massachusetts. Urban legend has it that the town was abandoned and is now overrun with dogs, hence the name. Others say it got its name from its dubious inhabitants in its time. Now, Tech, surmising the town from the 1890s, described Dogtown as being a strange place where there were, and I quote, women who dressed like men, men who did housework, alleged witches, former slaves who lived by gypsy ways. Honestly, men doing housework, it must be the work of witches. The community seemed to thrive for just a short period, the mid-1700s until 1928. The last resident of Dogtown was a former slave named Cornelius Black Neil Finson. He was found in 1830 with his feet frozen and living in a cellar hole. The houses were raised, but you can still see remnants of the old settlements today, although many people wouldn't brave a trip for fear of running into wild packs of dogs or spirits of witches still haunting the woods. Coming into number three, we have the Phantom Black Flash. It was October 1939 in Provincetown, Cape Cod, when children began being wholly freaked out when out of nowhere, a tall black shadow jumped at them and growled at them. The figure was frequently described as having blue eyes and silver ears and jumped rather like a gazelle. As soon as he was spotted, he would growl and then jump away, again, like a gazelle. The phenomenon was reported by children who would cry and seem visibly shaken, but adults seem unaffected. That was until Mary Costa saw the creature, and a spate of other adults had run-ins with an eight-foot man in black with glowing eyes. While sightings were at their height during October 1939, reports of the black phantom flash continued right up to 1945. This was when a group of kids reported throwing a pan of boiling water at a creature that matched its description. It cried, hopped away, and was never seen again. What was it? Coming into number two, we have a very famous urban legend. We have the Bridgewater Triangle. The Bridgewater Triangle refers to a rough geographic triangle that encompasses a number of Massachusetts towns, including Abington, Rehoboth, Freetown, Bridgewater, Seekonk, and Berkeley. This triangle is an absolute hotspot for ghostly, paranormal, and satanic activities. Key locations include the Hockamock Swamp, where spirits are said to dwell, the spooky Dighton Rock and Profile Rock with its open armed ghost, the popular suicide spot, the Solitude Stone, and the Freetown Fall River State Forest, which has seen swathes of ritual and animal sacrifice and murders. The Bridgewater Triangle has had reports of giant snakes, UFOs, 
Bigfoot sightings, Pukwudgie sightings, random fireballs and floating orbs as well as many ghostly occurrences. Honestly, we could do a top 10 on that place alone. Finally coming into number 1, the most enduring Massachusetts legend, we have the witches. We know that the Salem witch trials were a colonial blight upon history and really did take place between 1692 and 1693. For some reason, New England has always been obsessed with witches, believing in them absolutely. The Salem witch trials were just one example of witch fever which swept across the east coast of America. The Salem trials began because of a group of young girls claiming to be possessed by the devil. They accused several local women, many of whom were killed as a result. Tales of witches run rife in Massachusetts and the evidence can still be seen today. A lot of homes still have witch windows for example, Now these are slanted windows that were built to stop witches flying into homes. These can also be found in Vermont, so everyone was afraid of witches in New England. Why? So guys that was the top 10 scary Massachusetts urban legends. What did you think to this list? Are you from Massachusetts? Did I leave anything out? Shall we make a part 2? What's your obsession with witches? Let me know all of the answers in the comments section down below. And guys, wherever you're from, don't forget to let me know what the weirdest story of your town is. Alright, before I go, I'm just gonna read some comments from the scary mirror urban legends. Michael Rolfling said, The reason vampires don't have reflections in classic myths is because mirrors used to be lined with silver and not glass. Silver was believed to be a holy metal which vampires would not be reflected in as they were unholy creatures. Modern mirrors, backed with plastic or glass, will show a vampire. So maybe that guy without a reflection is a ghost. Ooh, very interesting. Interesting, thank you for that comment. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the scariest of them all? Me, Night Slasher, me. <laughs> Good. Anyway, I'm Rebecca, scary McFellgate. Thank you for watching this video. Please do leave a thumbs up, share it with a friend. If you guys want to check out our Instagram, there is a link in the description box down below. Alright, see you next time. Have a good day. Bye.